Okay, part three, exciting conclusion to our epic Mr. Wells is in Boston saga. Um, last time when we finished, we looked at a um, product table, contingency table that contained all the possible outcomes of rolling two six-sided dice. So now I want to look at two more unique dice, a 10-sided die and a six-sided die. So the six-sider we already talked about. 10-sided die is exactly what you think. It's just another die that instead this time has 10 sides also numbered one through 10. And what we're interested in finding out this time is the number of ways that we can obtain a sum of seven after we roll these two dice. So say we roll them and we get a five on the 10 sider and a two on the six sider, gives us a sum of seven. So that'll be one of the possible outcomes we're gonna look at. So uh, let's make this list, again, in a systematic way, try to not miss any possibilities. So let's make two lists. Let's say that we have our 10 sider. And then, so we'll list results here that could be paired with results from the six sider to give us a result in sum of seven. So I want to try to do this in the easiest way possible. So I either want to start at the bottom or the top. Uh, I don't want to start picking random numbers that will work. Like I don't want to start with like five and two because then I might end up missing something along the way. So what I'm gonna do, you gotta just kind of play it by your, look at the example that you're dealing with. I'm dealing with a sum of seven. So I'm gonna think, what's the lowest thing that I could possibly get on this 10-sider to pair with a possible result on this six-sider to get a sum of seven? So I think, well, I could get a one just so long as I get a six there. So one six would be one possible outcome. Another, what if I got a two? Then I need a five. Three, then I need a four. Four, then I need a three. And let's talk for just one second at this point. This is what we were looking at on the table. Three, four on the 10 side or six side respectively is different and unique, a different outcome than four, three. This is me getting a three on the 10 side This is me getting a four on the 10 side These are unique outcomes, if it helps. Th this we have some clarification because of different types of diet. Uh, if we were dealing with the same type of diet, I'd encourage you to, if a problem doesn't specifically tell you to do so, think about the red and the green or something like that. Eventually, like you're going to find on Combinatorics Worksheet 1, you're going to be rolling three dice, so you're going to need a blue one too. Um, so we've got four, three. Where were we? Let's go to a five, two, and let's go to a six, one. Now, the ten cider has values larger than six. We could get a seven, an eight, a nine, or even a ten. But because our sum needs to be seven, we can't use any negative values, obviously, as a result from the six-sider, so we're done. This is our whole list. So we're gonna say, in how many ways can a sum of seven be obtained as the result of the rule? Uh, this is gonna be in six ways. Systematic listing at its finest. We'll do this a lot with plenty of different kinds of dice. But for now, example four. Now we're gonna be picking a president and a vice president for a club that has five members, again, advantageously named as Alice, Betty, Claire, Diane, and of course, Eve. So we need to now think about how many unique committees could be formed with this president and vice president for this club. Now we only have a small club here, which is good. We need uh, some more advanced techniques to think about something that uh, might be a little bit larger without being too annoying. Um, so this is going to be a situation where we need to think about a couple things, repetition and order. So similarly to how I had my list of things here, I could, if I wanted to, in one way, create a list of my possible presidents and then the possible VPs. Now labeling this, if it helps, it's your own work, do what you need to do. Um, as we work on this more and more, probably be labeling less and less. But the first thing I want to consider is how are all the ways the committees that I could make have Alice as the president? Now, just to preserve the integrity of power structures, if Alice is president, she shouldn't be the vice president also. Even though it's not explicitly mentioned in the problem, that's going to be a given. We're going to build a lot of committees for uh, the next little while. So that'll be a trait that all the committees have. So if Alice is president, she could have Betty as vice president. She could have Claire. She could have Diane. And if you're listing these as A, B, A, C, A, D without the labels, that's perfectly fine. Just remember that you're thinking about president and vice president. It's gonna come up again here in a second. 
Uh, so, and then of course we can put it together with E. So there are four ways that we can make Alice the president. So we didn't see repetition. I didn't do an AA entry here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is think about Betty being president. But, and here's where it's different than some examples we saw earlier. Alice, 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 we already listed the ways she could be president. It's perfectly fine for if Betty or anyone else was president, for her to be the vice president. So this is a case where we see repetition, not proper, but the order does matter. A, B is unique from B, A. The same way that 3, 4 was unique to 4, 3. It's just all about the context of the problem and understanding what you're counting. So let's continue. I think you can probably predict how long this list is going to be. Uh, I'm not going to do a B, B. I'm going to do a B, C. I'm going to do a B, D. And B, E. So now I've got Alice accounted for president, Betty accounted for. You can probably guess how this list is going to finish off. We see four entries for Alice, four for Betty. I bet you can predict there'll be four for Claire. And I'm just going to uh, mess that up real quick. And then I'm going to fix it. And uh, I'm just going to write these, as I said, is acceptable without the labels over here, just to preserve space and uh, time. I'm not going to do a CC. I'll do CD. CE. Four more for Claire. We're going to guess there's going to be four for Diane. And we're going to be right. And then of course, Eve needs the opportunity to be president and she shall have it. So there we go. And at this point, you should be recognizing patterns. I've got four here, I've got four here, four here and four here, four here, five fours, five people, four ways each. We got a total of 20 committees. You know, we're, write the word committee so many times in the next uh, couple months that maybe I should if you take off points if you spell it wrong at that point. Okay, so pretty typical counting exercises as far as listing goes. Like I said, this is going to be a situation where listing is going to be how we're going to have to play the game even after we've learned more things. We're going to be able to do this problem in a better way starting uh, at the week of Thanksgiving. Now, I want to walk over to the other side of the room here to talk about an alternative strategy which is useful and often very necessary which is using tree diagrams frame this up real nice kind of nice okay tree diagrams you've seen before probably um, if not not terribly hard to digest now we're going to be considering building three digit numbers from the set one two three four but we're not gonna allow any repetition of digits. So this is different than the um, number creation problem we did as example two, I think, uh, and that we were allowed to repeat. Uh, so here we have, then we call this a restriction on our counting. Um, so we have a restriction here. We just need to be mindful of that. And we are being asked how many numbers can be created. Now, I'll tell you right now, tree diagrams can get annoying because they can get out of hand really fast. So. Practice and a little pre-planning can go a long way uh, to save you in headaches as your diagram goes like this. So strategy number one. First off, we're gonna do some labeling here. We're gonna think about having our first digit kind of in a column here, followed by our second digit. We're thinking about numbers, so this is the hundreds and the tens. Then we're gonna follow this with the ones, the units digit. Uh, and I'm about to write ones. So let's instead say third. And then what I'm gonna draw out of this, and this is kind of an optional, uh, kind of our totals, or rather than totals, let's say results. Actually, it makes a little more sense to say results in this. Uh, so we're gonna look at what we're given. We have the set one, two, three, four to work with. We're not allowed to repeat anything. So the second bit of strategy in terms of after following labeling is coming to your first column and kind of centering out. I don't want to start with my options up here. I want to give myself room because my tree diagram is going to start to branch out, okay? And it can get really out of hand really fast. Um, so I'm going to kind of space this out. Hopefully it doesn't get too crazy. Okay, so there are my possibilities for my first digit. I haven't used anything yet, so I'm not restricted in any way. But now I have to start dealing with the repetition restriction because 
If I use one as the first digit, I can't use it for the second digit. So I'm going to say the only possible digits I could use second would be two, three, or four. And I'm going to draw branches from the one to those three options. Okay, and we're going to continue that into the third, and you can already see if you're thinking about what's going to happen, this is going to get a little crowded over here. So hopefully we've planned accordingly. Now if I start with a two, that means I can't use a two as the second digit or for that third digit. So I'm going to go one, three, four. It's my three possibilities right there. If I start with a three, then I'm going to be using a one, two, or a three next. Already kind of feeling like I didn't plan this out well enough, but hey, you guys won't judge me, right? Uh, if I start with a four, then I've got to go with a one, two, or three in the tens position. <coughs> so, so far I've started to build some numbers. So let's say I start with a one, I go with the two next. I'm going to have two options to go here. I can't use one or two. I could use three or I could use four. If I go one, two, I could use two or I could use four. If I go one, four, I can use one or I can use two. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I can use not use one. I can use two or I can use three. Now you're probably already saying to yourself, man, this looks like it could get really annoying really fast. This is kind of a larger example in terms of the number of options we're starting with. Generally, this is going to be like a binary style problem where it's maybe an on off switch or something like that. So it doesn't get that crazy. Uh, so we'll see that in the future. Um, so let's say that we're now starting with two, then we go with a one. So we're going to have three or four. If we go two, three, we'll have one or four. If we go two, four, we can go one or three. Now we can already see, maybe make some projections about how many numbers we'll end up with. But again, we're listing, so I wanted you to see exactly how this list is going to end up shaping up. So let's finish. Uh, we start with a three, go with a one, then I can go two, four. Already getting crowded. Uh, if I go three, two, I can go one, four. If I can go three, three, hey, screwed that up. I can't do three, three. It's almost like I intentionally repeated something so I could see as I'm making it, I can repair, totally intentional. Uh, so if we go three, four though, then we go one, two. All right, I'm gonna start using some of the space down here. Not the prettiest thing in the world. Your book has much prettier computer generated examples if you're really uh, interested in a more aesthetically pleasing diagram. So three, two, I'm sorry, four, two, gives me a one, three. And then finally a one, two finish off. So, look at all these. Grab another color here so we can see something. Now, from right now, all of the ends of these branches represent a result. So, for instance, I have the result following branches from the top. I go one, two, three. 123 is one of the numbers we could make. And it probably, if we were just listing it out, would have been the first number we would have created from the set. But then we follow it, that path again, one, two, but this time four. We're seeing a similarity as what we were doing when we were creating the other digits. We're seeing uh, what if we started with the one and the two? Then we're going to see starting with the one and the three. And then we're going to see starting with the one and the four. Now, so there are the six possibilities of numbers in the 100s from 100 to 200. So just to step back for a second and examine what we've been asked. We were asked how many numbers can be created. What the actual numbers are, we really don't care. Um, this could be an example coming from the unit we'll do in the winter uh, where we're thinking about probability. We could say what is the probability about a particular number being drawn from this set and we'd be interested in how many numbers, not the number themselves. So I'm going to stop listing these results of course, you could go through and find any unique results, like say you wanted to go three, two, four. So like from this branch, you'd get 324 as a possibility. Because of the way we've arranged this, we've taken a care of two things. For one thing, we made sure that there was no repetition of digits, and each of these numbers is unique, because that was another thing. We're building unique numbers. So rather than going through and exhaustively listing out all these let's just look at how many can be created all i need to really do is think about counting these branches so i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i'm just looking at 
the numbers in this final column. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So, diagram helpful. Answer to the question, though, is not the list of numbers. It's how many can be made. So, hope you found that helpful. Um, there's going to be a couple of examples of uh, tree diagrams on your homework, which is Combine the Torx Worksheet 1. Uh, so that is going to be uh, available in class, posted online. Solution guide will also be online before I return. So your goal, after having watched these three videos, is to get into that worksheet. Some problems are going to be uh, simpler than others. So as always, be persevering. Uh, check your answers in an appropriate way, so you're not obviously just copying things down. And um, try to rely on some of the techniques that I talked about. So. Uh, with the exceptional case of there being some sort of blizzard in Boston, and I never see you guys again, I'll see you soon.